Welcome to our Perfect Print Placements webinar. We have a ton to cover today, so I just want to make sure we're going to be able to get through it all in this uh, hour time frame format. We may be going over just a little bit, but this webinar will be recorded, so uh, we would love for you to be here. The beauty of these webinars and attending them live is that do not be shy. Ask questions. Uh, that chat section is there. I have Mike here with us from Transfer Express. He'll be moderating in the chat. And he's going to be able to drop links for things that we're talking about. Or maybe he might be able to answer questions that I can't get to uh, because I might be focused on the material at the time. But I have the chat up right here. Uh, Tanisha and Jeff, I see you. Hi from the Caribbeans. Man, I want to be down in the Caribbeans. But that chat section there on the right-hand side of your window is built for us to help you out. So any question is not too big or too small. We want to answer them. And that is the beauty of these webinars. That is the goal of these. To, to help you guys feel confident, keep printing, uh, and be confident in your capabilities as a decorator. Today, I actually have a camera hooked up, uh, so we're going to be able to get some live studio shots. I can show you the placements on a t-shirt. Uh, I just have them laid flat. You'll see here in a minute, but I wanna be able to show you and kind of walk you through and or answer any questions that you guys have about placements, because after this webinar today, I want you to never misprint a shirt again you're going to be on top of it. And uh, okay, let me I let me walk that back. I still make some misprints every now and then. We all make mistakes, but this is going to reduce those mistakes, reduce all of the cost of ruining garments or misprinting them. So all here, uh, let's get rolling. In our full agenda today, oh, those shirts right there on screen. I actually have a sample uh, from one of my examples here of that shirt uh, to show you for some placement. So we are going to look at how to uh, place your shirts. And we are going to look at some different placement tools and guides and techniques, uh, as we'll call them, and how they work, how they are going to make a difference for you and your apparel that you print. We're gonna talk about the basics. So the best position and placement for full front, left chest, probably the two most popular decoration locations uh, that we see as apparel decorators from being in the industry well over a decade now. These by far are the most popular placements. You get that st center standard, excuse me, what's happening to my, my talking today, but um, you get that standard center chest or maybe full front. Uh, and then of course, the very popular left chest. We can talk about pocket prints a little bit when we're talking about left chest. That helps you align them. You definitely don't have to measure if you're going for the pocket, uh, but you have to ensure that the garment you're getting is quality because sometimes those pockets are sewn on in the weirdest locations. But we're not going to cover too much on pocket prints today. But I do want to talk about some more common, uh, unique or specialty placements, we'll call it, like the sleeve and back prints, especially some little tips when you're printing on certain styles like hoodies uh, that you will need to modify that placement. Uh, and then we're going to talk about printing over a seam because some locations, if we're talking side prints uh, or even sometimes sleeves, headwear, you're going to be printing over a seam and we want you to have the best looking results possible. So I'm going to tell you what transfer types are going to be the best option for that. Uh, and then we're going to try to pepper in some inspiration at the end for some really, really cool um, placement ideas that are kind of out of the box. You could offer them to your customers or maybe help your own uh, apparel brand stand out because you're going to be unique. You're going to stand out from the crowd and at least catch somebody's eye. Uh, and hopefully people will buy them. Some like the side prints were really, really popular right when I got into the apparel decorating industry, 2008 to like 2010. And then they've kind of fallen out, but they, I see them now coming back used more often, uh, not like the full side print, but definitely that like lower hem line. Uh, you see a lot of people on Etsy specifically kind of playing with those placements, but we will jump into here. I saw some questions come in, but I think Yep, it was uh, slides and recording will be available. Mike already got that one in there. Um, how to make placements level on sleeves. We're going to we're going to teach you a, a great tip for that today. Um, and so, yeah, we see this here. Um, yeah, Vicky, not only placements, but size or width. I want to show you actually a really, really cool tip for that. Uh, and we'll be coming up. So, Vicky, do not let me forget to show you that tip uh, because that's really cool and something really simple uh, for you to be able to accurately size your prints. Uh, even if you're sitting down with a customer, it's a great tip that you could do pretty much almost anywhere. So uh, let's roll right into it. 
So first, uh, we're going to talk about these application rulers, these placement rulers. Usually they have a little semicircle shape like you see here in the picture. Um, and they allow you to align the ruler to the collar. And you're able to line up a left chest or line up a right chest or even center line based on the collar. They're really, really super handy. We have one here at Transfer Express. Of course, you could buy them anywhere, Amazon or your local Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever your Joanne Fabrics, I think maybe even might carry them in the cricket aisle. Uh, but these are, you know, they're fairly inexpensive, but they come in handy, especially if you're unsure of where exactly to put your print. They are not fail safe. So they do require you still loading your, uh, your garment on the heat press properly so that you're not super askew because then your collar line is going to be a little askew. But the collar shape definitely helps you align it up pretty, pretty close. And it's going to give you a great idea of how far your shirt's going to be or how far your print's going to be down on your shirt. You're not going to be printing too high near the collar line or printing down on the belly print. Uh, like this one here, I believe is two and a half inches ish. I usually say one and a half to three inches for that spacing between the bottom of the collar, not the top of the collar, but you'll measure from that seam at the bottom of the collar, right where this picture has that one placed. So you can see the collar right where it fits. Uh, one of these reviews for them, use them for clothing with my heat press and they make such a difference. So much easier to make sure that the transfer is aligned and straight. And that is one thing that uh, we hear uh, as a large challenge to people coming in the industry is not necessarily the placement, but making sure it's straight. So it really depends on your design too, because if you do have like one line of text in you know, some big, maybe two or three inch high letters, if that is not straight, it's very, very noticeable. Something more organic, uh, like a circle shape or like even like something like, a, imagine a pair of sunglasses, something like that uh, is going to be okay. It's, go it's not going to stand out if it is printed slightly crooked. And I'm talking like maybe up to a half inch or three quarters of an inch. Uh, definitely circles, you can't really make a circle crooked unless there's text on the inside, but sometimes that looks intentional. When you have your apparel flat on your heat press, it also is going to be much more apparent if something is askew than if you actually put the shirt on. Our bodies are not flat, they are three-dimensional shapes. Uh, and so if you're ever unsure, if you printed something and went, oh man, I think I screwed that up. If you have a mannequin or a family member or a coworker or a friend, throw the t-shirt on them and look at that. And nine times out of 10, you look at it and go, actually, you can't even tell. But when it's flattened, everything's squared up to the size of your platen on your press, then you definitely do have, um, you definitely could run into a problem. But uh, yeah, like I mentioned, it, you're, you usually could get away with that pretty good. I wanna actually show you this ruler in real life uh, through the video. And so we're gonna come on that in just a little bit. So we're gonna cover quite a bit of tools and then uh, I'll switch over to the camera and we'll be able to uh, show you some of this stuff in, uh, in real life real time and we could ask questions if you guys are like wait what did you do there i'll slow I'll, I'll slow down and change things up brandy says my mannequins are my favorite tool for deciding on placement before measuring mannequins are absolutely awesome i have just a mannequin bust here uh, that i'll show you guys uh, for some placements but i do the same thing as well they are an awesome investment uh, and you could get mannequins on amazon at least just the top half you don't need a full freestanding mannequin unless you have a storefront then those are great to show the fit uh, of garments on a body shape and get people interested. They have been proven to sell more when you display uh, your apparel on a body shape. But even the one that, that I'll show you here today, is, I think we got off Amazon for just super, super cheap. Uh, and it is just that top half bust. But when you're trying to eyeball a left chest with a larger than regular graphic or anything like that, like we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to diagnose those issues on a mannequin and then like tape your design up on it before you even get started. But I don't want to get too far into that one um, just quite yet because it's coming up in just a little bit. Um, let's see here. I saw a question coming rolling on up in here. There's a lot coming in. Um, where was this one? I don't know. I can't find it. Ask it again um, and we'll and we'll check it. Yeah. Uh, don't leave. Oh, don't leave that guide in place when you press. Uh, like this one. This one is plastic, uh, so it will melt to your heat press. Uh, some of them are heat sensitive plastics or like Teflon coated or something like that. Uh, this one, you will remove it. So even here, uh, this image that you see, uh, I'll, I'll get into it a little bit when we actually show you here live in real time. But this image here, you would align it 
and then you're going to roll that uh, collar off of the platen. So you'll place your graphic and then grab each side of the shirt to pull it off nice and evenly. And so everything stays in place where you had it. But just like that, that's like a two inch little, uh, a little two inch, just pull the garment off the platen. So you don't have to worry about that. Of course, when we, we, we recommend pressing, especially heat transfers, uh, just make sure you have any collars and seams off the pressing, the, the, that platen on the lower platen so that you aren't affecting the pressure. Because, uh, you know, a t-shirt seam, maybe like this one, isn't too thick. But if you have a piece of ink right next to it, that's going to be blocking some of the pressure that's getting to your print. So you want a nice, smooth, flat, even surface for the best transfer adhesion. And that best transfer adhesion makes those that, that print, uh, regardless of the decoration type, if it's goof proof or ultra color or ultra color max or elastoprints, when applied properly with that proper even pressure across the entire print, that will last 50 plus wash dry cycles. You could have the quality that you know you could stand behind and that your customers aren't going to have an issue. So very, very important uh, to make sure that you have all of those obstructions off of the printing area. Another uh, placement idea here is this T-square. So the T-square is a little bit more cumbersome than just that little ruler, but it you typically, just like this one here, has a sliding ruler on the T. So either you could align to the collar, so you could get your center line right where you see those top two arrows, and then depending on your graphic size, of course you would have to set it up once for the initial shirt, and then as you run through your entire run, you could be uh, adjusting and, and or kind of keeping it locked in there. Like if this is three inches down from the collar uh, that you would kind of lock and hold it there. But uh, it, it could be, it really could slow you down. Uh, and so if you're trying to figure this out or just like the mixed reviews that we've read online, these reviews came straight from Amazon. Uh, this tool is not as simple to use as it should be. Uh, it would often slide when trying to make small adjustments to the transfer causing me to have to completely line the transfer up again and then realign your ruler, especially if you aligned it to the collar and then moved your shirt so the collar came off the platen. Now you have to put the collar back on the platen after the transfer moves. You're not sure on your placement, but it does work exactly as described if you are taking your time uh, and really want that spot on accurate placement. Uh, I will say from my experience, in the print industry, working at commercial screen printing shops that are doing thousands and thousands of t-shirts a day, I watched press operators 99% of the time. Uh, they'll measure on the setup to ensure where it needs to be uh, and then uh, just use other tools to do it. So laser alignment is one of those that you see often in those contract print shops. So you line up the shirt once, you set your lasers here onto the press. Now these are compatible with any style heat press whatsoever. Um, these are any platen size, any heat press, but you do need some space next to your press. So if you have your press on a table, that's great. Just like that, that's completely fine. But if you are, uh, say, have your, your press on a caddy stand or a home built stand, you might not have room for this laser system next to it. Now it does keep ultra easy consistency from shirt to shirt. You could see in the example that we have uh, right here in this image, this is set up for a left chest print. So depending on how you set up the lasers, the laser alignment tool from Hottronics does have four lasers uh, that you could adjust uh, the, the direction of the beam and kind of even focus them and then everything kind of locks down. You could turn, you see all the switches on the base there, um, you could turn the, uh, the lights on and off. So if you just wanted two of those crosshairs and make one spot, say for if you're just doing a center chest, you wanna mark the center line of the transfer in both the X and Y axis, if we're looking at it like a graph, and bam, you set that center line, it's not going to move. Now, from what we've heard a few times from people, a lot of people love the laser system, makes alignment super, super easy, but also, one of my biggest cautions is it is not fail safe. It does actually require you to load the shirt onto your heat press the exact same way in the exact same like placement every single time because the lasers aren't going to move, but now the variable is where exactly the shirt is. So if you're kind of just in the middle of a run throwing shirts on, 
uh, and you start to do it slightly differently or like the shirts are slightly twisted, now you're misprinting those shirts. When you think that you're aligned because your lasers haven't moved, but the, the shirt itself is moving. So you get, uh, you just have to be very, very careful about how to load the shirt onto the platen. Now, uh, I actually wanna show you that because coming from the screen printing industry and the commercial printing with like huge 16 platen automatic carousel heat presses, uh, I learned a thing or two about loading that uh, especially is super efficient and pretty spot on accurate once you get the hang of it. And I wanna share that tip with you here in just a moment because that's going to be a, it's gonna be, it, it is actually like really, really cool. Uh, it, and hopefully it makes a difference if you have a threadable press, even if you don't have a threadable heat press, I wanna show you my techniques for being able to do it all the time. So uh, here's another review from somebody who has two laser alignment systems and they try to do the jobs with 24 to 200 items. It just really makes the positioning the transfers easy, especially if you're doing a lot of small jobs with different placements, it's probably not going to be the best investment. I believe it's just a little bit uh, expensive, but uh, yeah, Mike right there put the link to the uh, laser alignment uh, system, which could be just a, uh, it, it could be expensive, uh, but if you're doing the large runs, it absolutely could be worth it. We've seen people even uh, like use the magnet laser level lines from like Harbor Freight uh, and duct tape them or like glue them to their heat press or use Velcro. But even those, especially if it's on a moving part, it has a tendency to move a little bit or wiggle. So you have to, um, you might have, you might find yourself readjusting it as you go through the, uh, the print run as it keeps going up and down, especially on an auto clam machine just like this. Now the placement tools, the visuals here uh, is the three or four finger rule. Now this is the tip that I saw used most often in commercial print shops. So if a customer specifically requested, I need my, my graphic three inches down from the collar, uh, then of course it would be three inches down from the collar to the top of the graphic. But for most standard placements, three fingers is what it's going to do. So uh, it just makes it super easy because you don't need any guides, you don't need tools, uh, you just need a measurement device, which uh, conveniently is attached to your body and it's on your hand. So you can easily just double check your placement. So you could get, uh, you just pretty much could center up. And as you could see here, this will be a tip that I show you too, uh, but you could see those slight folds in the transfer itself denoting the center line. So we've already got our center line down. We know that we loaded our shirt onto the lower platen accurately, so it's nice and squared up. So as long as we could square the edges to our design that we cut out of our gang sheet squared up, and you could see the grid line makes, makes sure that you could uh, see that it's not askew in any way or another. And of course, that rectangle lower platen, this is from the auto clam, and then just use the fingers, place it right on down, and you're done. Now, if you're doing a run of like 200 shirts, by the end of it, you're probably not even going to be measuring with your fingers anymore. You are going to just be eyeballing it because it'll be so ingrained. You know exactly what that distance is going to be, and you could really be running through those shirts. It just makes it super, super efficient. So uh, with this as well, so kind of coupled in with this is that you could also place these shirts with uh, looking at the armpit. So typically, if you have like uh, like an 11 by 11 graphic, let's just use that for an example. That is what we call a standard center front uh, kind of graphic size. It fits all sizes uh, from smalls to 2X. It doesn't look too small. It doesn't look too big. Um, and it is a nice full front of a t-shirt. It doesn't start to go into the armpits when you get to the 14, 15 inch wide range. Uh, but when you start getting down into those armpits, that could be a problem. You're not seeing the graphic. So 11 inches is for the most part, it's going to be on the front of somebody's body. Um, so if you're doing an 11 by 11 inch graphic, like this little icon that we see at the top of the screen, right where that X is, is where the center line is going to uh, connect from the bottom of collar and then the armpit. So right there should be the center of your image. That's going to be right on the chest for most people. Now that's taken in consideration an 11 by 11 graphic. If say you just have one line of text, you should put the bottom of the text on that line because if you center it, it might be a little low. But at that point, it's always going to be in that same spot uh, if you're gauging by like where the armpits are. Now, of course, some uh, larger styles or let's say like streetwear styles that are a little bit uh, cut differently, those real boxy tees, sometimes have the uh, armpit seams a little low. 
So that's when you start getting into that belly print area, but you could always check yourself depending on the dimensions of your artwork that you should still be in that three finger range down from the collar on a standard adult shirt. Um, Debbie eyeballs it there. Yep, that is, uh, that's definitely what a lot of people do. And especially now that when you do more and more, right, Vincent, when you do more printing, now you could just eyeball it. So that's uh, exactly the way that, you, that you'll find yourself doing. And if you use that, you know, that, uh, that actual measurement tool of your fingers, and depending on the width of your fingers too, you'll find out what, what works the best. For me, uh, that's actually my hand in that uh, picture at the bottom. So you can see I have some, some pretty, pretty chunky hands. <laughs> so my three fingers might be somebody else's four fingers, um, or if you have even more enormous hands than I do, uh, you might even be down to like two fingers down from the collar, but still it's going to always be in that one and a half to three inch range uh, is where you could get away with uh, a perfect placement. So I promised that I would switch on over to the camera and I think uh, right now is going to be um, the best opportunity to do it. Uh, as I'm kind of switching over, I do wanna mention that, uh, you know, the tip here using the shirt tag as a centering guide is absolutely something that you can do, um, but using that tag, sometimes they are missewn, uh, so you run into a little bit of an issue if that tag is not sewn in in the proper location. So let's switch on over to our t-shirt right here on the table uh, with our placement ruler guide. We got the placement ruler right here, and this is the Transfer Express one. This is available in our application kit, which is a ton of useful, uh, I mean, it's the tools that we as uh, employees here at Transfer Express and avid heat printers ourselves are constantly reaching for. Uh, so we just bundle them all up in one uh, kit for 35 bucks uh, and you could get that on the site. Comes with some heat press test strips, a t-shirt for practicing your alignment and this ruler as well. So it is definitely a value packed bundle. Um, but so here is our, our shirt laid flat on here, but I have the auto clam just a little bit up here that I do wanna show you exactly how we load a, load a shirt on the press. Cause that is the number one most important thing of what we're doing if we're gonna be aligning things on the platen here. All right, so we see, let's move the press in a little bit so we get it more in our shot right here. So right here, we'll be loading our t-shirt onto the heat press. Now, one thing that I learned after doing it for a long time uh, is threadable heat presses are the best. So uh, it makes it really super easy that we could put this on the caddy stand, or if you don't have a, a room for the whole stand, uh, you could get a counter caddy stand. Or of course, the A to Z press is semi-threadable. The fusions are all fully threadable without any other accessories. So you're able to uh, do this technique. But this is uh, the easiest way to make sure that you're solidly aligned on the shirt. So it, what I'm gonna do is just grab the bottom here. And typically you'll see these shirts come folded from the, manu the garment mill. Uh, and they kind of already have a seam down the side of where they were folded. So I have them all on a cart and I'm gonna grab the same spot on both sides. So right on the edge where it folds, I'll grab those spots. If you could see that right there. And so I know my fingers are in the same spot. Now, if you have a garment that has a side seam, like a, uh, like a Next Level 3600 or some of those more premium Bella Canvas, the fashion fits usually typically are not tubular tees and they will have a side seam. Grab that side seam uh, and then that is your placement on the side. So you'll have a side seam in each one of your fingers. Then as we go here, loop it around the top of it and then just pull all the way back, nice and even, nice and even. And then as you're done reaching, because I didn't want to burn my, my face on the press right up here, pull all the way down. So push it all the way down. And just like that, we could see that the seam here is aligned to this, this top edge of the platen as well as this side. So if I put it on sideways, those seams aren't gonna line up. You'll see the seam up on top instead of right on that edge or wherever they're gonna fit. And then here you could kind of like eyeball it to make sure it's centered up. Or my favorite thing to do is look at the sleeve seams. So the sleeve seam here, we're about an inch down uh, from where that one is. And I'll check this side. And again, we're an inch down. So you could check both sides. Uh, and even if you're standing over the press, you don't have the best angle of it. Maybe I can rotate it here a little bit. But if you're standing over the press, you could just kind of like pull it and you could see the platen in it. So then boom, we know that we're centered. We know that we're centered. Now, you wanna take that crease 
and trace it all the way down both sides. You'll get a feel for it the more shirts that you do, but I like to make sure that this crease is equal distance and doesn't like go down or go up because that's one of the most common things. Somebody thinks their, their shirt is loaded properly on the press, but this is skewed. So yeah, it looks nice and flat. Yeah, our, our top seams are a little askew, but maybe that's close enough. Uh, but when we print our graphic, it's going to move down the shirt. So where my shirt is right here, it might be slightly twisted on one side instead of straight. So you wanna avoid that, make sure that we're nice. And that's, that's the point of going all the way on the platen and then backing it off. Because you know that you're straight when you go on, and then when we back it off, we know that we're backing it off equal distance. Now, one thing too is, this one kind of has it, but you could see this center line fold in the shirt. Don't always trust it, but as long as it uh, is not super moving either way, you know that you're nice and centered. So I could just go back through, double check, and see, I already pulled it off and got a little askew, and then that's it. That's where we're going to be printing. Now we are nice and our surface is nice and level, nice and even, no obstructions, no seams whatsoever on either side, all ready to go, all ready to print. Let me get back over to the chat to see if there's any questions here for you guys. Um, let's see, yeah, tag along platen for loading shirts makes it super easy because the tag along platen actually has that. I have this here um, and I'll show you guys that real quick before we get into some placement. This is the quick change mechanism, just right down here. This little lever locks down and pulls back up, and then your platens just lift up and on out. Uh, that's what really makes Hotronics presses uh, really, really super cool. Really love the, the features of this press. And if you're on the fence about Hotronics or any other brand, this platen is kind of the deal breaker for me, is that you could print the front of the shirt and the tag at the same exact time. But if you're not even printing the tag, you have this neck shape on the platen. Let me see if I could show this to you a little bit, a little better. But yeah, you have this neck shape to the platen. So you could get your shirt down on it. You see your seams here tracing the shoulder and it's much more of a body shape. And then as long as you go all the way on and roll it up a little bit to get your collar in this area right here, you're A-OK -okay, solid. It's going to be a perfectly printed t-shirt. So I'm just going to lock that back in. You can see how easy that is to just go ahead and slide those on and off. So here, we'll do this again. Always make sure your, your tops are, your tops are aligned too. That makes it, makes it super easy right out of the gate, especially if you're just laying over. So I don't want to forget about you guys who don't have fully threadable heat presses, but what I do then is ensure that you grab right here. I grab where the shoulder seam meets that top, uh, or where the sleeve seam meets the top shoulder seam, pinch it. Grab the same exact location on the other side. So now I have this, I'm holding the shirt perfectly straight. Then I'll usually, because on a clamshell press, you don't wanna get burnt, so I'll kind of flop it up there, but then go down, make sure you're nice and centered. And if you need to be, you need to pull it off, pull it off again. So now I know that I am centered and I went on straight, push any collars or platens off the area, and then we're set ready to print. Just as easy as that. And as you could see, now instead of the seam on the side, we actually have the fold of the t-shirt. And you see how flat and even and flush that is the whole way down. Well, this is where the, the neck shape comes in. So we'll grab it right here. And if you could see, this is the edge of the platen. So we wanna make sure that if, sometimes they get wider at the bottom. So we wanna make sure that both sides are equal on each side. And as we're done there, that's straight and centered on our platen. So we could use this rectangle shape now, if you don't mind the, <laughs> the tag along attachment, but we could use this rectangle shape to align our stuff. But easy as pie, we'll grab those side seams like we did last time to thread it on. And of course, with the tag along platen, you should have a threadable heat press. Otherwise, you're, you're kind of limiting yourself and the capabilities of it. So just like that, I didn't put it on straight. So you could see that it's pulled up this way, but now I could instantly align it, make it nice and easy. And now I am ensuring that we're going straight down. So it's all nice, tight and fitted on there. But now I need to roll that off, which is fine. No problems, we'll roll it up. We'll look at each side and I, I, I was a little bit off on this side. So I just pull them back together. Make sure it's nice and aligned. Make sure that you go nice and gentle down. And that's it. Now we're aligned and ready to go. The huge benefit of this tag along platen 
Of course, easy alignment, uh, but then we pull these up and you can print the inside tag right here too at the same time. So rip the tag away, print your inside tag and the front of your shirt all in one press makes it super duper easy and boom then you're done you pull it off and you're all set but these uh at least the uh automatic screen printing presses that i've worked on have this neck shape and it really helps align them uh super quickly and easily but just like i showed you with the uh rectangle platen it's not that big of an issue or not too hard I don't know where to put this thing. We're gonna put it right there now. And we'll put this one up. Um, let's go up. Uh, yep, uh, the press kit does come in a package with the, uh, press kit does come, in, uh, the auto clam does come in one of our packages with the tag along platen, uh, but it is, is an added uh, feature to that. So purchase the whole kit and comes with platinum. Awesome. Yep, yep, yep. That package deal is a super great deal. Um, Tracy, sad to see you go. Um, and we will keep going here. All right. So uh, let's go back to our alignment here. And I'm going to show you this, this stuff here on the table because we could get a better look uh, on these on the table here. So uh, just because we could get this vertical view, it kind of mimics what you're going to be seeing uh, when you're looking over the platen too. So we could talk about these alignment tips. So here, this is where we would use our t-shirt alignment ruler. So you want to make sure you're nice and centered. We have our seams aligned just like we would on the platen area. And we have it all loaded on. We have our center line. We have our collar line. And now look, my three fingers are the exact width of what this is. So I know that my three fingers down from the collar is all set. Now, like some of those examples, if we're say we're printing goof proof, you're kind of coming in blind. So with our ultra color max transfer, you could see that this is all right here uh, and aligned. But sometimes you're going blind if you have a paper carrier. So the one thing with the paper carrier is we just want to make sure that we know how far it is down from the collar. So instead of placing here, because it, sometimes it's an inch, sometimes you cut it, it's two inches, three inches before your graphic actually starts. So don't trust the paper, unless you're, when you're cutting, you want to cut it close. We'll grab this one. We'll pull it up a little bit to make sure. And I'm just folding it back until I see ink. You see the top, top line of ink? And that's where we're going to be. Now, when we print this one, three fingers down from collar, we are centered right onto the platen or right onto our shirt, right where we need to be. Now, Say we take that same technique that I showed you or talked about with using the armpit sleeves. If we draw a line across to the armpit sleeve to armpit sleeve and straight down, we're gonna hit right about here. So that's a little low on the graphic, but if we put this one here, right here centered up, we are three, six, seven, eight to the top of the graphic, yeah. So like that is, uh, that's gonna be a belly print. That's no longer on the chest because this graphic is only what, maybe, we have, a, we have a ruler. It's only about five inches tall, so that's pretty short. So if you're 11 or 10 inches, obviously if the graphic is this tall, you could see that aligning it here to the center line is going to get us right where we need to be. You could always go high on tall graphics like this, uh, where you could be within right in that one inch area. So uh, let's show you this shirt that was in that featured uh, photo. So this one here, you could see that this is, I mean, may, maybe a quarter inch away from the bottom of the collar, but because this is a youth shirt, it's centered as much as it can be to the sleeves. But then if we centered it to the sleeves, the top of this is actually going to be printing on the collar. We don't want that to happen. So that's when you move it down, tuck it in as close as you can right there to the top of the platen. So you could use that as that measurement. And I mean, this doesn't change. This will scale from size to size. So even though this is a youth medium, that same trick is going to work where you could get that nice and centered down the center line across on the edge and put it right there. So that's a great use of that. Or even this one too, this is a nice cool foil print, but this uh, 10 inch by 10 inch circle is definitely going to be way too big 
or way too low if we put it three fingers down from the collar because then we're starting right here instead of up here where we need it to be. So it's about uh, three quarters inches down from the collar, but look where the center line of the circle is. Go to these armpit seams right here and center line of the garment. It is directly in the center of our print right there. So those are the two ways that you could use those and get it ready to go. Now, where did our t-shirt alignment ruler go? With this one, see this one's going to be pushing us a little bit too low. So if you're just trusting one method and rolling with it, you are going to be printing, uh, yeah, two, three, two inches maybe down from where it currently is, uh, which is going to give you kind of a belly print. So you definitely don't want to do that one. Same, uh, let's, talk, let's look at a different style. And so this is like a crop top. Uh, and so this is a, a women's medium or a women's large crop top, but because the shirt just doesn't have the space and this graphic itself is about 10 inches high, if you count these little points to the top, that this now is no longer three, three fingers down from the collar, that it's a little bit more up. But as you can see, that same exact placement right here, armpit to armpit, put to the middle is in the center of our graphic right there. So we know that the placement is all set in there. Julie asks, can you center the logo with the sleeves if you have an 11 by two rectangle graphic or would it be too low? I think that would be too low, but the, 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 the tip to that is, uh, if you are using that tip, we'll go here back to our blank t-shirt, but say uh, like 11, 11 by two, that's kind of gonna be like if we had one line of text right here. So I don't necessarily have scissors, but what I could do is just fold this. Actually, it is a perfect opportunity to show you the awesome tip that I have. Uh, so say 11 by two. So you, need, you, you think 11 by two is going to be the best for your graphic, uh, the best size for your graphic. Take a sheet of paper and just measure it out. So we know this is already eight and a half by 11. So this is an eight and a half by 11 graphic, but say we needed it two inches. I could just measure two inches right here, kind of put a uh, put my finger on it just so I know where to fold it. And then we'll fold right there, lining up the edge. So we're nice and centered. And then I can fold that all the way down. So say now this is the size of our graphic. I'm just trying to fold this so it's nice and visible for you. So if our graphic is 11 by two inches, right here we're putting this on uh, right in our armpit seams. And so that's going to be pretty low. Uh, and if you look, uh, I mean, that's three, six plus two, like I mean, eight, eight fingers down from the collar is pretty low. So in that case, what I like to do is take that line, and make it your baseline and yeah, maybe right there. So this is gonna be our four fingers down from collar, but now we're on the baseline. So we know that we're going to be on the chest, right there on the chest, so we know right where we are. But this is an awesome tip for when you're thinking about your t-shirt graphics and you go, yeah, I'm kind of thinking four inches for a left chest. So let's, let's look four inches by four inches, and then you don't even need scissors, but you could cut it up. So uh, here's, let's go four inches, one, two, three, nope, one, two, three, four. So four inches. So again, we'll just fold this at four inches. And we can fold this back at four inches. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. And we'll know four inches by four inches. This is about the approximate size of our t-shirt graphic. Man, that looks pretty good for a left chest, right? But sometimes you'll, you'll say, hey, I want a one inch by one inch or a two inch by two inch. And I want my company logo. This was our two inch we did before. We'll just go ahead and align it right here to two inches and we could cut this one up and you go, you know what? Two inches might be too small. Two inches just might be too small. Maybe we should go to three inches, but using this paper trick, you have copy paper laying around these. This is just laying around. Uh, this costs nothing. And you have these tools at your disposal pretty much any time. As you could saw, yeah, I did find some scissors and I'm able to cut this one up. But even if you don't have scissors, just fold the piece of paper uh, as you need to go. Of course, you do need a ruler of some kind. You don't need a t-shirt alignment ruler. Any ruler will do, but you're able to, to gauge that sizing. So that's a really cool trick uh, that I do want to show you guys just to make sure uh, that you have everything all set. But I want to make sure that we're still covering everything here. Now, we haven't got, uh, we haven't really got too much into uh, any left chest prints yet, but I want to cover some more material before we do dive into 
uh, some of that left chest printing. So we'll leave that right there for now. In fact, we'll grab this one uh, and get it in there. So uh, before, uh, I'm gonna switch back to the slides here, but if you guys have uh, tips of your own uh, for here, uh, for aligning your center chest or left chest placements, let me know in there um, and we'll get it. Yeah, uh, Bruce asked about that V-neck. And so the V-neck is going to be up closer under the collar. So yeah, just like how Mike just answered, uh, one inch is down or so, or maybe even less depending on the size of the graphic because it also depends on the, the deepness of the V because uh, some Vs are deeper than the others uh, and some are fairly shallow. So you do have to kind of look out for that. That's where those mannequins really come in handy. Tape the graphic to it or take that little, uh, you could take the size of, say you do have a gang sheet and you don't want to necessarily cut it out all the way, uh, that you could just cut the, uh, pe the cut a piece of paper out to the same dimensions as your art, put it on a mannequin, and then tape. Tape the graphic on the mannequin, take the graphic or take the t-shirt off the mannequin, lay it down like we just did, and then measure with your fingers, with your eyes, with any placement tools that you have, because then you're able to, uh, you know, make sure you know exactly where that placement is going to be and how it looks on a person before you do it. But I have some great, uh, great tips here coming up uh, for you guys for that. Yeah. Um, embroidery rules. Yep. Uh, I'm not too, not too familiar with the, uh, oh, and the embroidery rule, rulers, Nicole. I was like, you guys have separate rules for embroidery here. You got to let us in on some of those secrets. <laughs> um, Lamar asked, uh, Joe Nate, what's the best way to determine if your print is straight? And that's alignment on your heat press. That's going to be the best way to make sure that it is straight. Cause then you could align to the corners of your heat press to ensure that you aren't a uh, skew because typically all of those, you know, you align it perfectly to your heat press, but if your shirt's off a little bit, then it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a skew or something like a ruler that's going to show you that, uh, that straight center line or that baseline that you should be aiming for right there. So here is a, a very visual guide. If you guys want to screenshot this one, uh, or we'll send you the slides out. So you'll, you know, if you miss it here, we will send you this graphic so you could have this as a nice visual uh, cheat sheet, if you will, uh, for full front, which that maximum area that we say is about 12 inches wide by 14 inches high. We say 12 inches wide because anything larger than that, and you're starting to go over the sleeve seams on extra small or small, uh, that's going to get you stuck. So yeah, uh, Lisa with, uh, I don't know if you're following up with a the question there. Um, or what about youth and adult smalls? Yes, 12 inches wide uh, will be fine for adult smalls. For youth, if you are printing youth and you wanna keep the same graphic sizing, try to stay around nine inches. So nine inches will print even on like youth smalls. Uh, youth extra smalls, nine inches is pretty much gonna be maxing out that entire front. Uh, but for most adults, 12 inches wide is going to be the max of what you're going to be doing. 11 inches is much more standard uh, and will fit extra smalls or even some larger youth sizes fairly good. Uh, I just did nine inches for uh, uh, the family vacation shirts that I made my entire family when we went on vacation a couple months ago. Uh, and those were nine inches wide, but it was a circle. Looked a little big on my daughter's youth small, uh, but for everybody else, all the other adults, I wear a size extra large and it doesn't look too small at nine inches. That, so you don't really have to worry about that too much if you're crossing all of those, uh, all of those sizes. Uh, a sleeve uh, flag print should probably be around three or three and a half inches, Yvonne, uh, as you're asking about them uh, in there. Uh, Teresa, there, there's not a link necessarily to this cheat, cheat sheet, but we will send this PDF out. So then a medium front, we're saying eight by eight, which is typical for uh, circle graphics or kind of anything larger. Center chest as a five by five. Uh, so that's kind of when you go to like Chipotle. Chipotle shirts these days have the, just that tiny little logo right in the center chest. That's like that five by five area. Across the chest, we're saying uh, like 12 inches or 11 inches is that max. Uh, five by five is kind of boosting the right chest or left chest area. Typically, I try to recommend staying under 4.5 because if you have like a circle logo, a 5.5, a 5 by 5 circle logo is enormous for a left chest, but a 4 inch or a 4.5 inch looks, uh, looks a lot better. The sleeve areas are three and a half inches by three and a half inches. Uh, any vertical areas for the left or right, you want to stay within that five inches or four and a half inches for that typical like left chest, right chest placement. 
And of course, the bottom right, the bottom left, uh, five by five or five by six. Of course, you have a lot more usable real estate on the shirt. Uh, and when you get into those lower unique placements, uh, you kind of get a little bit more freedom and you get a little bit more wiggle room. But uh, I'm going to talk about kind of like anchor points, we'll say. So a little bit uh, just to make sure that you're anchoring at the same spot. When you're doing a large run, when you're trying to repeat the same exact results, just take a piece of the image of the design and say, this is an inch away from the side seam and an inch up from the bottom hem. Something simple as that, uh, all ready to go. So then uh, a full back print, that same full front print, the 12 by 14, uh, or like an 11 by 11, the eight by eight. So you could see that these sizings kind of differ and how they look on the garment. Uh, yeah, Crystal, P Pinterest has great guides. I mean, Google Images even has great guides uh, for all of this as well. Now, of course, uh, when we're talking about three, three inches down from collar, you th to two to three, maybe even less like that one shirt that I showed you. Uh, and then toddler, even if you have like a six by six graphic or an eight by eight graphic that we had on that one uh, youth shirt, uh, definitely it's going to be less than two inches down from the collar. It's going to be, uh, you know, a half inch or a quarter inch like what we showed you. Yeah, center design size, like I was talking, the 11 by 11 just fits really good. Uh, youth in that the larger size is in a 10 and a half, the smaller in an eight and a half, so a nine right in the middle should fit both of them. Uh, and then any toddlers or onesies, don't go over five inches. That should, uh, that really should keep you maxing out a toddler shirt or a onesie. Those two, three, four t shirts are pretty rare, even as a custom decorator. If you're running your own Etsy store and your own brand, uh, you may want to offer those styles, but for the most part, uh, you know, onesies, and then you pretty much switch over to youth extra small, which I think is comparable to a 4T, um, which is my daughter was in that size just a little bit ago. So <laughs> that's that's definitely got to be going. Uh, Tanisha asks about the 3X and 4X. Print a lot of those, and sometimes it sees, uh, seems I overcompensate for the size, trying not to make it appear smaller than it should be. Uh, so uh, if we talk about the way that shirts are actually sewn, you are adding much more width before you add length. So you don't have to worry about your placement all too much, but for print sizing itself, uh, typically you could get away with a very similar print size for your regular adult shirts, because then it's just going to be on the front of the shirt. Yeah, sure, laying flat, it may look like there's a lot of extra fabric sewn to the shirt, but when the wearer actually puts that on, that's still on the front side of the shirt. It's not like it's, you know, it's it's right where it needs to be in that same placement and it doesn't look too small or too large. Uh, of course, the mediums, if you're doing like a 11 inch wide graphic, the medium is going to look perfect. That's going to be exactly what you're looking for right in the middle of the range, especially if you're going extra small or, uh, you know, anything else. But so, uh, Tanisha, for your specific question, if say, you're doing a run of shirts for a customer or you're, you know, you're, you're printing for a team or uh, employees for a, you know, local work crew or anything like that. And the smallest size on the order is like a large and it goes large up to 2X, 3X, 4X. So you're going from large to 4X. You could get away with bumping that 11 inch, maybe up to 12, 13, 14 inches, because then your smallest size is still a larger size. You don't have to worry about the restrictions that you're going to hit if, say, an extra small is on the order. But I always recommend not to size your graphics for what size shirt you're printing on unless you have a split to like, yeah, the youth or toddler, then maybe you have to change that sizing. But for all adult sizes, 11 inches is going to look awesome on extra small all the way up to 4X. It's going to look great. Um, yes. Um, Let's keep going here as we go. I'm going to get into hoodies here in standard placements in just a minute. But yeah, for this design sizing, I showed you all of those cool, uh, those cool paper tricks that I like to like to show here. Um, so here is our left chest. And this is where we're going to place some left chest graphics right here. Rhonda, you're very welcome. You're awesome too. I got to say, uh, for all you guys hanging out here today, I am absolutely floored by your dedication to your own t-shirt business. You're, you're hanging out, trying to learn on a Thursday afternoon, uh, embettering yourself. And that's really powerful stuff because the people who are bettering themselves are looking to learn. They're looking for more opportunities. It takes dedication and discipline and drive and you guys have it. Uh, and that is the, that is the, the basic, uh, 
I mean, the foundation for success. So I tip my hat off to you guys. You guys are absolutely awesome. So back to the left chest here. So uh, this is one of the best ways to do it. Uh, you could absolutely measure, and these are general, depending on the size of the shirt that you're doing. So 5.5 inches to eight inches down from the shoulder seam where it meets the collar. So not the bottom of the collar. So if that's saying that from that top of the shoulder seam to the bottom of the collar is about four inches in say like on a large shirt, that's probably about four inches, uh, That then that's four inches down from the bottom of the collar. Or like I like to do it, I just use my fingers in four fingers down from the collar to the top of the graphic. But you always wanna make sure that you're centering from that uh, that collar seam uh, up at the top where the collar meets that shoulder seam. Let's jump on back over to the studio here with me. Um, we're gonna turn the video on. Let me stop this slideshow so we could slide back on over. And here we are full screen. So I have my small little graphic here. Now this one is probably just, uh, yep, right at four inches. So that's right in that left chest range of what exactly we were talking about. Uh, so let's say that we are going to go, like I was mentioning, we're gonna do a left chest. So we'll be printing right here. So we'll just take this off our shirt, not to confuse us, but a left chest. So we're gonna go right here. Say this is on our platen. We're loaded onto our heat printing platen. And I wanna pull the chat back up so I can hear you guys. Perfect, right there. Use your, George uses an index thumb uh, and finger as a square. That's the perfect way to do it. So yeah, you could, you could kind of lay that down and know exactly where you're gonna be um, or as you go here. And some cases, this is going to be the center of the shirt, but I don't wanna confuse you too much with different methods. This is the one that works for me. I've seen a lot of decorators use this as well, even when we're at uh, trade shows and I see people doing left chest prints as at our demo heat press station. This is what I see a ton of people doing and it just makes it so easy and it's kind of scalable to almost any size. Of course, with polos, uh, you get a little bit more guidance from how far that the buttons come down on a polo and usually I'll go to the bottom button and that's going to put it right about here where the left chest is. Some polos go down way far. Uh, some women's polos don't have buttons at all and they're really just like a cut V-neck. Uh, it all depends on the specific style, but I'll just show you this on a basic t-shirt because this is going to be the most important aspect. Here, right up here to this collar, we're gonna go and draw a line straight down. So imagine we're drawing a line right down the garment. You can kind of see a little bit of my, my line where I kind of wrinkled the fabric right here. Then what I'm gonna do is four fingers down from the bottom of the collar. So about that, that three or four inches, if we're talking 5.5 to eight inches total to the top of the graphic, I'm gonna go right here. So I'm aligned right on my center line and I start four inches down from the collar. Now this is a pretty standard, maybe two inches by four inches. That's a standard logo size for a left chest hit. And bam, we're all set. Now this is exactly where we wanna be. If you start right here, so that center line, you start there, and that's gonna be a solid, uh, I don't know, that's probably four inches over from the center of the shirt. Uh, on this large regular t-shirt, this is going to be in the armpit. So you're this close to the shoulder seam, uh, and so, if we are just one finger away from the shoulder seam, I'll show you on me here, because I'm wearing a t-shirt today. Uh, one finger away from the shoulder seam, right where this cuts in, the graphic starts right here. So if this graphic started on me, right there, man, that's too far over. That's way too far over. But if I just crouch down and you see where this, this seam meets the collar on me, draw that line straight down. Let's center up right there. And then how's that? How's that for a left chest print? That is perfectly aligned. Four fingers down from the collar. I have it spread a little bit because I have my microphone right here. Four fingers down from the collar, aligns it right there, right where you would wanna see that left chest print. It just makes it so super easy and it's scalable to almost any size. Of course, on smaller sizes, you're not going to go four fingers, you'll go three fingers or two fingers on like a, on a, on a, like a very small, extra small or small garment medium that four fingers is going to be okay uh, and for me i'm wearing an extra large shirt right now but you can see that four fingers perfectly fine for a large actually i think this shirt might be a large because it's fitted but all set all right there and that's the perfect left chest print of course you could always err to the side of caution if you're really worried err more towards the middle of the shirt than the armpit because nobody wants to wear this print but something like here where maybe it's like that's like right on center line of the shirt that's actually still okay. 
It's a little bit more close to the center, but you're going to call that a left chest print, absolutely no problem. But somewhere like right in this range is going to be absolutely perfect. But that's kind of like what I was touching on earlier. It's not exact. You just have to get in an, a in a range of an area, and that's going to allow you to get that uh, that placement when it fits on somebody's body. It fits great. So just like that, right there, we are all set. Uh, that is the left chest. Um, let's see. Um, when you say the bottom button, do you mean the bottom of design at bottom of button? No, the center of the design uh, at the bottom of the button. I think I had an image of it here. Let me pull back up our slides. And I think this image right here was it. Yes. So uh, this is just a standard port and company uh, cotton polo that we printed this one on. But it's going from the bottom button and right centered to the middle of that graphic. We're still centering to the line right here. So right where the, the collar then, I guess, on the, the polo instead of the just the, uh, the collar seam. But where that top seam meets the base of the collar, trace that down uh, and then typically right centered with that button. Because if you go any higher, it's going to sometimes even be covered by the collar. So say if that graphic was just uh, sitting centered to that, that top button, it, that's going to be really high, almost up on the collarbone, and not that, uh, not that left chest print. That's more of like a collarbone print when it's up that high. You got to be careful about that uh, when you are printing on those hoodies. But you, pulling it up on a mannequin is like one of the easiest ways to do that. Uh, because then you get to see exactly where that placement is. So when I talk about mannequins, I said I'd pull my buddy out right here. And this is my mannequin friend. We're going to pull this up and hope that you guys could see this. So this graphic right here, this is on a mannequin, one that we printed. And this is, as you can see, about four fingers down from the bottom of the collar, right there to the top of the graphic. And then we are centered right here to the center line. Let me grab this and draw a line straight down. Right there. So right from the top of the collar all the way straight down. And we're centered right on that. Now this is a large, large shirt on a probably a small mannequin. So it looks a little large. But as you can see, it's not in the armpit. I mean, this seam is still a mile away, a good four fingers or something away. But right there. You could see, I mean, let's get all this. That's a perfect left chest print location, even on a smaller model. So this, I mean, this shirt is gigantic to this mannequin. But you get the, you get the point. You could see this when you are printing uh, yourself at home. And this is this super cheap mannequin bust that I was talking about. Just really super easy to throw it on there when you're saying, eh, man, that looks a little low. But as you can see, this looks good, even on this size mannequin. And we have plenty of shirt here too. It's not a full full length guy. But so as you as you kind of look at that, that is a perfect left chest print. Absolutely no problem, right where it needs to be. And so it's not in that same location. So nice and easy. But those are those mannequins that really could save you when you're doing any of those uh, kind of weird placements. So let's go back down to our shirt here. Um, and see what else I could show you guys. I'm gonna go back and start up the presentation again. And I do want to check this chat and seeing how we're doing. Uh, Pam Pam, we are actually talking about doing in-person training classes again. Um, I don't wanna let it slip, but we have something very special in store for Impressions Fort Worth uh, that we're going to be doing down there at the end of September and early October, I believe is when uh, Impressions is happening. <clears throat> but at all of our trade shows, we do usually typically do some in-person education, but we're trying to bring up the workshop Wednesdays again, now that uh, people are a little bit more familiar, getting back out there and, uh, you know, kind of being around each other again after this uh, pandemic kind of winds down. So we definitely want to do in-person training because it's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, I, I love doing it when I do the, the trainings uh, at, you know, uh, any... GPX Expos or Impressions Expos or Decorated Apparel Expos, anything like that, even everything embroidery. We kind of do a lot of hands-on instruction at the booth. So it's really awesome to come out and see that stuff. Sherry, we need some classes in Arizona too. Kathy Taylor, of course, Fort Worth Impressions Expo. We will see you there. Always a good time down there in Fort Worth. And this is the last impression show of this uh, 2022 season. We've been to Long Beach. We've been to Atlantic City, 
and we'll be going to uh, impressions. Actually, I believe I'm teaching a very, very similar class on placement and positioning at the Fort Worth Impressions Expo. So uh, yes, hands-on training is back. Uh, get a ticket, because I think they might even be free right now for general admission and just a little bit for the workshops, the Impress You conference, as they call it. Um, that That is, uh, I think, still in the early bird rates for Fort Worth. So they're about to jack up in price. So if you are thinking about getting to a show, Fort Worth, Texas is an absolutely awesome little city to go to. I'll be there. The rest of the Transfer Express team will be there. I know the Stalls team will be there. So Josh Ellsworth, Jenna, and uh, even Kelly will, I believe, uh, be in attendance. So you get the whole crew uh, and you get some great hands-on experience with uh, products, brand new products, uh, and you get to make and take some stuff. So it's going to be really fun. All impression shows are always a blast and it's a great seeing you guys. But let's keep moving on and talk about sleeve placements. So I saw some questions questions coming up uh, about sleeves and sleeve placements. Uh, and so uh, I do want to show you those as a nice little quick tip. So you can absolutely get the leg and sleeve platen for your fusion or uh, air fusion press. They don't work too well on the Hotronics Auto Clam because uh, it, it doesn't, the base is a little bit wider than what a sleeve typically is, uh, but where the fusion just has that little gooseneck arm that holds the lower platen, that you are able to fit a sleeve onto that. Loading onto those platens sometimes could be very time consuming. Uh, especially if you don't have a quick slip pad protector, that makes it super easy to slide on and off. So one of the best tips that I like to tell people is use the fold. There's always going to be a seam on a long sleeve shirt, be it a hoodie or a crew neck sweatshirt or even a long sleeve shirt, like my example I'll show you here in just a minute. Uh, but there's always a seam right where the, the sleeve is folded flat. Typically, it aligns perfectly with that top shoulder seam, so it is right on the outside. But as we, uh, if you don't know, the two uh, bones in your forearm actually twist uh, to get you some range of motion in your arm. So when your arm is flat down, your arm is actually twisted towards the back. So that side seam, uh, we'll say the side fold, actually favors towards the back side. So if you use that as a center line, for the most part, you are centered on the sleeve. But when you're standing straight and your arm is flat against your side, it actually moves the print a little bit to the back. So I like to use the fold. So just like this one, this picture shows a sleeve just folded over a heat press platen with a graphic aligned to the fold. You want to get as close as you can because that fold is the center line of the garment. Uh, and then we'll be able to do it. So let me pop this camera back on and show you what I'm talking about here with a long sleeve shirt and a heat press. So here, um, let me pull this up. We're going to rotate the camera up so we can see what we're doing on the heat press because this one this one benefits from both sides. But uh, so here, this is what I'm talking about. This is already pre-folded. I just pulled this one out of the box. There's already this kind of fold right at the top. OK, it's lined up perfectly with our top center seam. If you could kind of see that. So there's our seam right there and there's where our fold is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this onto our heat press. Typically, if we were to open this up, there is actually a seam on the bottom of the, like uh, coming from the armpit to the cuff, there is the seam where this is sewn shut. So we want to avoid that. We don't want that to be printing over our, our area, which makes printing these sleeves, uh, or people think that printing these sleeves are very difficult. But right here, so let's grab uh, a long graphic here that we would be putting. So this is our graphic that we're, we would be printing on our sleeve. See if you can see that on me. There you go. So just a little two inch high by about 11 inches. And we're just going to go ahead and keep the cuff and all of these thick seams right here off of our platen. So we just have it draped over our platen area. If we didn't have a quick slip, it would be much easier to have this thing laying flat. And then, you know, the top of our shirt over here. So I always like to stay about uh, two fingers or about an inch, inch and a half away from the cuff seam because it's just so much more visible when you have the graphic here on the forearm as opposed to like up here. You see it much more often down here uh, than you do up here. Now, sometimes you'll see even on long sleeves like that, that left chest placement and that you're going to anchor, and I talk about those anchor points, from this seam up here. So this will be, you know, five inches or six inches down from this to meet right on the bicep and you see that bicep print. 
or like new era, new era, the new era print where it's just that little tiny logo that they print right up on there. So quick slip pad protector, of course, it quick slips right off, but we'll grab this one and just lay this over this area right here. Then grabbing our transfer, aligning it as close as we can up to that fold and make sure everything is on our platen. So we can even pull this off a little bit, make sure those wrinkles are down and off. And then bam, right there, we're set. And that placement is going to be great. Now, when you wear that, that's not going to look like it's on the front. It's going to look like it's right on the side. Because realistically, instead of just being center lined on it, we are just set. We'll show you here a little bit, a little bit more right on top. That right here, you can see where that center line and the, the shirt is. And we're going to get as close as we can. We'll stay in about an inch away from this cuff to stay away from all these little wrinkles and stuff down here. And this one's going to be perfect right there if I actually had my shirt straight. And as close as we can, right there would be an awesome sleeve print location. Absolutely no issues printing that. Uh, so if you just want to do cuff prints, you could do that the same way. As we look up here, just have that, that hang off the platen. And anytime you're going to be near seams or anything, uh, just, just increase the pressure a little tiny bit to ensure that we're going to be able to get that, uh, get it flattened out any of those seams that are going to be close by. The fold's going to be okay because as we have it folded, the fabric is double thick. So it is the same thickness all the way through. So you don't have to worry about this causing any more. If we were printing down here, yeah, you're going to have an issue. But here on the rest of our shirt, it's a-okay. I'm going to switch back on over to our slides. And we're going to wrap this thing up here. I do appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. I hope you guys are learning. And Mike's answering your questions. I see him in there as well. Uh, and being able to help you guys out. Steve, absolutely. You could create a seam if needed with the press itself. Uh, that's a great tip. Just like folding the transfer over. How I mentioned we could we could kind of fold the transfer over uh, if you didn't have uh, you know say you have like goof proof and it has that 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 opaque paper backing that you just hold it up to the light fold each edge over let's see if I could show you this on camera this is going to be tricky to point this at the light but we're going to see if I could show you this because this is one thing that you could do because yeah you could always use your heat press to iron it as well but so this is our design. Can't see it too. There you go. A little bit through. So you could, if you hold it up to the light, you could see the ink through the paper itself. Even white ink, you'll be able to see because the white ink will block the light. Then when we fold it over, my light source is over here. So all I'm going to do is go over here. But I want to make sure that the, the everything aligns properly. So now I'm aligned. I know my lines, my the top of my graphic is aligned because it was cut straight on the edge of the paper. Then I'm just going to put a little crease at the top and a little crease at the bottom. You don't want to fold the print itself because it may come off the backing paper, but then when we open this back up, I know exactly where my center line is going to be. Let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see it on the table there a little bit better. Um, and right there, you could see that that center line, you'll see the top and bottom of the print, so you can make sure that's nice and centered. You could do the same exact thing to your T-shirts too if you want a nice center line on your T-shirts. All you have to do is fold it over, and then just iron it real quick, kiss it real quick with the heat press and put it back on down. And that will leave these, these somewhat folded uh, seams that you could see. Let's see if I could show you this one here, um, if it'll show up. Yeah, so you get like these, these seams like right here. See this one right here, right there. Yeah, you could see that in the camera. So yeah, you could use that seam for either your fronts or anything like that, but it does add an extra step. Uh, but if you're just starting out doing a couple shirts, that's definitely one easy way to be able to do it uh, as as you you get more comfortable with your placements and making sure it's all straight and all ready to go. So um, yeah, yeah, super, super easy. And that's awesome tips, man. That is, uh, that is awesome tips. Um, so let's talk about some back placements real quick. I don't need to show you these all too much because usually uh, you can measure and you'll see it when you start printing or if you have a mannequin or you, you have a shirt on a friend. If you can't afford a mannequin, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to buy a mannequin. You could use your friends, your family member, your cousins, your brothers, your, you know, anybody. Uh, so 
Typically, if you're doing names, just like that one that says Anderson, you're going to want to do typically two to three inches down from the collar. Uh, and so that's that regular three inches, but that back, the back collar is going to go a little bit higher than the front collar. So you're going to have that right across the shoulders, right where it should be. And when you have that right across the shoulders, that's going to be where that nameplate typically is. Some jerseys have nameplates on them, and then you don't have to worry about placement because they've already denoted where it needs to go. Kind of just like the front pocket, if you're printing on the pocket for a left chest, you don't, it, it, it takes all the guesswork out of it. But when you're printing on hoodies specifically, uh, that Anderson you could see is probably not three inches down from where the body of the garment meets the hood seam. It's probably more like five or six because you want to get down under that area uh, so that you're not completely covered by the hood. Now that graphic on the left you see, that's probably about six inches down so that you are completely uncovered by the hood. A graphic like that with the top of that, uh, that bird eagle, whatever the wings are, there's that uh, that the blue shapes, those like that that jut up. Those might be able to be covered a little bit if you wanted to with the hood, but six inches down from collar, uh, or at least six inches down from where the body of the garment meets the hood seam, gets you completely clear of that hood when it's worn. Now Anderson's covered a little bit, but that's perfectly fine. Maybe it's for cross country, and they know they're going to be wearing hoods, and they're going to have them up, and you could get away with that. But for the majority of people who walk around wearing hoodies. The hood is typically down, so you want to be able to watch out uh, and that you're not covering your print completely when the hood's down. If you want a print that is completely covered by the hood, that's perfectly fine. Keep it within six inches to where that seam is, and nobody's going to see it when the hood's down. Then they flip the hood up, and it could have a little message or your brand or anything in there. And that's perfectly fine. Now, with numbers, that example on the right, I just want to touch on a little bit because numbers start getting a little weird when you print them very low. So uh, if, say, we did start this entire graphic on the right-hand side where that one on the left-hand side is, at six inches down from the collar, that's going to put those numbers almost on the bottom, like they're going to be closer to the bottom hem, that bottom cuff of the hoodie, than the top. So it's not necessarily going to be where you're going to traditionally wear numbers in the middle of your back. Now this one, too, if you align exactly like how I talked about lining to the armpits with a full front print, that is the perfect way to ensure that you're going to be between the shoulder blades in a perfect back print on a hoodie or even a t-shirt. So just like you could see, uh, that's drawing that, that X. X marks the spot where the center of your graphic should be. Uh, Carrie, this is absolutely going to be saved. And if you're attending with us now, we will email you out a replay uh, and get it ready to go. Um, Lamar asked the colorful front print that was just displayed. Oh, no, I missed that one. Um, is the ultra. I love that, that I could see through. It is ultra color max with the, uh, Lamar. I think you're talking about, uh, if you could see the little, the little thumbnail, this one right here, this, uh, this blue Ridge adventures tour. Um, this one is ultra color max. So all of our full color transfers do have that clear carrier. Uh, that allow you to see through it and makes placement an absolute breeze. But just like those tricks that I showed you too, even if you're using goof proof screen printed transfers, you could still kind of see exactly where you need to go. Or what we've seen some people do too, is just cut as close as they can uh, all to the graphics. So when you know the paper is going to be aligned right there, it's aligned directly to the top of the graphic. Yeah, this one, Ultra Color Max, our DTF transfers are uh, from what we've heard, the absolute best in the industry. I've played with a few DTF transfer types, but some of them do feel, especially like those, the cheaper low-end printers that you see people printing with, they feel a little rubbery or like stickery uh, on the shirt where like these actually feel closer to a screen print where they sit into the fibers. If you are interested in Ultra Color Max, we will give you a free sample, absolutely no problem. Uh, Mike could drop the link in there um, and let you know. And Catherine, yes. They could do gradients, photorealism, anything you want. This is just an example. Uh, so like even something simple like this, a four color, one, two, three, four with the white, a four color shirt. If we just needed a small quantity, man, these are actually profitable, six cents a square inch. Uh, and you could actually say yes to more jobs where like typically, I mean, even like five or six years ago, if somebody said, I need a six color graphic on a shirt with uh, one quantity, most places would be like, okay, no, like unless you're paying a hundred dollars per shirt, 
uh, for that one shirt, you're not going to get it. Uh, so this makes this possible. It makes it profitable for you uh, to be able to produce those. So really, really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, lower back placement. Yes, lower back. If you want to stay like on that lower back placement, you're going to anchor. So where you're going to place your, your guide point on your, your point of reference uh, will be that bottom hem. So lower back placements, you want to stay about an inch or two, especially on hoodies like this. Names sometimes are very popular on the bottom of hoodies, uh, but you want to stay an inch or two above that seam because like you could see on both of these examples or any hoodies that you own yourself, it bunches up with that elastic band and that could lead to some problems on a heat press or any press where you're trying to get a hoodie to lay flat. So just make sure that you have a nice, flat, smooth, even area, and usually staying about an inch or two away from that, that cuff on the bottom of the hoodie could keep you out of that, uh, that danger zone, we'll say, right? Top guns, top guns out, so the highway to the danger zone of bad place, placement. Yeah, uh, bad jokes are, are terrible. <laughs> uh, Vicky, glad you asked. Locker tag uh, placement on a crew neck? Man, it makes it uh, really easy when you do about one or two fingers down from collar and that nice branded uh, small, uh, like a two inch by two inch or a three inch by three inch print. If you put that about a, a finger or two down from the collar, so an inch to an inch and a half is going to put that in an awesome visible right there spot uh, that's right above the shoulder blades. So it's not between the shoulder blades, but right above the shoulder blades. Um, so uh, Sherry says, I'm not understanding what the lower picture shows. The center of the logo goes in the middle of the X. Yes. Uh, if your graphic is a, a standard graphic, then it could fit right there in the middle of the X. I'll swap on over to our camera one more time here, and I'll show you this example on the back uh, just, just to help you out. So um, let me get this one out of the way. So let's use something more like this Lake Life, Life graphic. So this is like super, super tone on tone real popular these days. I just want to make sure that this is all set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to the back of the shirt. And then we will trace our line down from the center. So it's a little bit harder to see. We can still kind of see our, uh, our, our, where our stitching is for the neck tag in there. But when we look at it this way, it's not exactly centered. So we'll go from uh, about where it is. So that's in the neck tag area. We'll draw this line straight down the garment. That's going to be our center line. And then to center our garment, we'll take armpit to armpit. And this is going to put this one right, eh, right about there. It's going to put it right on the shoulder blades. We are uh, five, six inches down from collar to the top of the graphic right here. But that's going to be a nice back print because you can see, I mean, we've got, there's a lot of t-shirts still left to go at the bottom. Um, and we're going to be right centered on those armpits. So right there, uh, and this is even kind of a short graphic. So an 11 by 11 definitely would be centered right here, but 11 by 11 is going to be coming up here. Like I think we mentioned earlier, this is like six or seven inches tall um, and then uh, about 11 inches wide. So we want to make sure that's centered. But even something like this, we could see that we're uncentered because we could see through uh, that there's more area on this. So some people even still will take these together, match the ink up to each side, and then throw a crease at the top and bottom, now we know that when we draw that center line right there, we have creases that are going to tell us that, yeah, it's the, the carrier itself is going to be closer to that side than that side. But the center line of our actual graphic is going to be right here. And then right there, maybe a little bit up, maybe you're a little low. So right there is going to be our back placement, just like how that one shows. So real, real cool. Uh, some different ways you could do it uh, and make sure that you're getting uh, an awesome similar result. Um, let's see. Yes, Jessica. So it does take a little bit of work. Uh, Jessica says it really screws in my brain after I have it threaded on the platen. And I debated, uh, with my example here today being upside down. So it looks more like if you have it threaded onto the platen, but I figured for most people, uh, it does get very, very confusing when you're looking at a shirt upside down. I promise you just stick with it because it is going to be an easier way, uh, once you get the hang of it and you get looking at shirts that way, uh, I got I got broken into it real quickly by working with uh, screen printing and everything kind of has to be upside down and away from you. So you kind of measure, you set it up uh, and then, you know, you're hitting the same spot as long as you're loading the shirt on the platen the same way every time. So we'll get that in there. Um, I know we're over our hour a little bit here, but I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Uh, we're just going to cover a little bit of printing over seams here. 
So like I mentioned, uh, you're going to need to turn the pressure up whenever you're trying to bridge any seam or printing near a seam, just to ensure that you're still going to be get that, getting that firm, medium to firm pressure that is required when you are uh, printing with any heat transfers. Now our CAD prints completely covers the seam. It is a vinyl based substrate that's printed. So of course it's going to span any seam and it's going to look great. Screen printed inks, you will see the seam, but it is going to fall into the seam. So it's going to look more like it's printed on the garment. Sometimes uh, we did a video on our YouTube channel about printing over the closed front zipper hoodies. So bridging that gap, we were able to do it by increasing the pressure on our heat press, but you do see imperfections in the print when they do hit those valleys in the seams where you can't just really force the ink in there. When you do traditional screen printing on those as well, you do run into a very, very similar issue, but typically it's cracking and it splits, uh, right? When, Cause it goes on wet, but as soon as it dries and the, the hoodie kind of shrinks a little bit, uh, it, it will definitely crack the ink and it's uh, a little jagged. Most people are completely fine. And especially if you're custom decorating, just set your customer's expectations when they want to print over a seam. Show them an example, have a photo of it or a uh, just a side seam printed garment in your shop that you could say, this is what this result's going to look like. Are you okay with that? And so when you do the final run and they say, man, this all of these look like garbage, like, well, I, I told you it was going to look exactly like this. And I don't want to say it looks like garbage. It looks completely fine to me, even as an apparel decorator uh, who's been in the industry a while, I am completely fine with over the seam prints in... Uh, when it should be, when it should be. Um, but Ultracolor, uh, any of the Ultracolor products, the Ultracolor Max that we were just talking about, the uh, the Ultracolor Pro that just got released last week, all of those work completely fine, completely fine, um, even on hats. So CAD Prince is going to go over on hats real good, even Ultracolor real good. Uh, just make sure that you're compensating for that extra pressure. Now I want to show you some sweet, unique placements uh, based around the side prints or even like the vertical front prints, which I would say were very unique or specialty placements outside of that center chest, uh, left chest. So here with like this Wildcats graphic, you can see it starts about even with the collar because it is such a tall graphic. You want to keep that tiger head kind of centered and rooted to, or the Wildcat head, I'm sorry, in that yellow shirt. Uh, that you want to keep that rooted to that basic left chest location. So that's where that one's going to be sitting on that. That also has an awesome little tiger claw print uh, that's right on the side, which makes for a super unique shirt, especially for like a sports team like this uh, for a school or sp spirit wears for a school. You run into these issues all the time where parents are coming back and saying, you guys have the same shirts as last year. So doing something like this can really help uh, your client stand out or your brand stand out when you do these extra placements. That top one on the tank top, the Alpha Fitness, is kind of cheating that side seam the same exact way that I showed you how to cheat that long sleeve print. So it's just super, super easy to be able to get that sleeve, that, that side placement, and then it's even going to be slightly in the front. Uh, so if you're uh, really kind of working out, you get, that print's going to be visible as well as uh, on the front as well as if you're looking from the side. It's not completely on the side, but that's an easy way to avoid any of those seams, especially on a tank top. I saw a question uh, about how do you, you print in between the, uh, like a racer back tank top where it gets really thin in the middle if you don't have a threadable platen. Um, and I would always recommend a mouse pad. So if you raise the print area with a mouse pad, and usually those like tank top seams are like double folded over and super thick uh, so that they can affect the pressure. But just raising the print area, you're able to print those locations. Um, yeah, unique placements are really cool, Evelyn. They are um, really, really super easy uh, to be able to do, uh, you know, any any like side seam, like they're not hard. Once you start doing it, start experimenting, uh, a lot of people really, really, uh, really kind of resonate with them and they want to buy them because there's something different. Uh, Tony, thanks for hanging out, man. Uh, sorry you have to go, but uh, don't worry about it. We'll send you the replay and I'm glad you hung out with us uh, for uh, as long as you did. Really do appreciate it. And then the Tiki Bobs. It could just be a unit form right there for, for everybody who works at Tiki Bobs Tiki Bar. Uh, but then adding that little placement of the Tiki guy on the side gives it that awesome vibe. Also really like that. I think that's a shark teal color too. Center black back placements, like we were talking about on that racer back, the spine prints will say, uh, as they they follow the shape of the, the spine, that vertical placement, 
really, really popular. Um, and it looks cool. Like here, like where you would traditionally have like a logo farm where it's like, oh yeah, maybe you have three on the first line or like two and then two on a line. Like, no, put them all in a row, all the same size and weight. Like, and then it just looks cool and unique. A really cool way to do it. The same thing for vertical front. You have all these kind of chakras as you go down. This would work great for a back print or a front print. Uh, it works all the same. We see these awesome, cool ways that to, to do it here. Owen, uh, there is a way to print a hat on a flatbed press um, without using a cap press. If you go over the, the Heat Press for Profit Facebook group uh, and search Skip Davis, this dude is a wizard with a heat press. Um, and he does all of these videos to show people how he's being able to print beanies and caps. And uh, he uses like foam and like washcloth to build up a surface area so that he could close uh, the, the hat and not flatten it. Like, yeah, he pressed for profit uh, on, on the Facebook group uh, and Skip Davis. Skip Dayton Davis, I think is his name. Laura, you're very welcome. Thank you for hanging out with us in here. So we're going to keep going. Uh, those sleeve prints. So as I'm talking about sleeve prints, I like to call these sleeve cuff prints because they are um, right near that bottom cuff. And these are cool little like positive uh, affirmations to the wearer. So they don't actually face the anybody else who is looking at the shirt. They're made for the wearer to look down and see it on their wrist when they're writing or uh, writing and, and typing or anything like that. Um, really, really cool. So uh, this one just says, note to self, find joy in the journey. They're about uh, an inch away from that collar, or not the collar, the cuff seam uh, on this long sleeve t-shirt. But this is very, very popular. Uh, and you would print this the same way where you allow that cuff to overprint or to hang off your platen so you don't even have to worry about that seam at all. Now these were really, really cool and popular right when I was getting into the industry. And eh, maybe they were already falling out of uh, favor then or the, the trend was failing. But the inside shirt placement. So if you pull the shirt up over your head on the bottom side is where there's a cat face here or this one. <laughs> um, and it's, so it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Um, and these are usually for like, yeah, like they were real big when t-shirts first started getting advertised on Facebook and everybody thought they were really cool, but you see these for costumes sometimes, uh, for Halloween, uh, and any adding these little Easter eggs in there too, even if you're running your own brand is super fun for your wearers to discover them. Uh, when they buy them. They're not advertised, they're kind of hidden. Uh, and if you could fit these uh, prints on your gang sheet, you essentially could be printing them at no added cost. So it's not it's not charging any more money. Now with anything like when you're talking about, uh, you know, charging your customer for extra print locations, you could do the same thing. Charge them for the print, even though you could fit it on the gang sheet and you're essentially not adding anything to your cost to produce the shirt. So really, really cool. Now this one also has the little I love my cat and a ball of yarn over on the side print. Um, it might even say like, ask me ask me how much I love my cat or something like that. And then you pull your, your cat up. That's Vince there making the nice little claw as well. So, <laughs> but this one, uh, like when I'm talking about that side, that side print right there, that's what I'm talking about with anchor points. So like say that like a uh, curly piece of yarn under the eye, that is one inch up from the bottom hem and it's two inches over from the side seam. And then you just line that same exact point up every single time, and you're going to get that same repeatable placement regardless of what size uh, print you are printing. This is another one, awesome, uh, where it goes all over the shirt. It even goes to the backside with a piece of yarn. Very, very similar artwork to we saw on the last one. But with this one, it goes into the logo of the shirt and then back around. So you can see that like, the front print here was probably done in two prints with the Mischief Textiles and that left piece of yarn. Uh, and then you would do the lower piece of yarn as well. You can almost even see where like the, the thickness changes and that could probably be your different print locations. So then you have one, two, three hits and you can even see that it bridges, it doesn't bridge, it breaks when it goes over that shoulder seam to not have, you know, the person printing this did not want to have uh, any of that texture show through the ink. They just thought, oh, okay, we can make the, the yarn break right when we hit that seam and avoid those issues all the way. Um, that's it. Uh, hope for our solvent printable vinyl. I think you're going to be looking at CAD Opaque uh, is going to be the printable vinyl. Ultra Color Max is a custom DTF transfer. So if you just send us your artwork, uh, we print it for you, ship it to you. Uh, they ship out next day. 
Um, and they're priced six cents per square inch, no minimums, uh, just a $25 cart minimum that you need to have. But um, with the ultra color max, you could print any color, color photographic, uh, and then even have free floating text too that you don't have to weed. They ship ready to apply 290 degrees. So anything from performance wear to cotton is going to print without scorching. A really, really cool product. Uh, but you cannot print on the carrier itself. Uh, it is a custom transfer that you just submit art and send it uh, send it to us and we'll handle all of that. So uh, as we wind this thing down, I do just want to talk about a little bit more information you can find. We have Logo Anything, which is a, a placement guide for uh, some out-of-the-box placements in an ebook e format. Of course, over on our YouTube page and transferexpress.com, we have all of our videos. We have a perfect print placement and positioning video uh, that kind of walks through some of the, the, the steps that we did here, but um, and not as an interactive format, although we always do answer those questions and comments uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, th that's kind of just an abbreviated guide of what we talked about today uh, and a little bit less placements. I don't think we get into the back prints all too much with that, just more sit center chest, left chest, uh, and talk about those different different areas. Uh, Hope, you could send us artwork in any format whatsoever. So um, PNGs, JPEGs, TIFFs, uh, just make sure it's high resolution, so 300 dpi at the size that you want to print it at, or vector artwork too. You can send us vector artwork, absolutely no problem. The PDF, AI files, SVGs, uh, no Corel Draw files. If you're exporting from Corel Draw, save it as a PDF. For design programs, I saw Crystal ask what's the best software used for designs. Um, the best ones cost a lot of money. Uh, I was a designer by trade and that's how I got into the t-shirt decorating business. I used all Adobe products, but now this, the Creative Cloud subscription is like ridiculously expensive. So guess what I use? I use EasyView online designer at transferexpress.com. It's completely free, easy to use, um, loaded full of 10,000 pieces of uh, customizable layouts and clip art. It is like double click and change the text or click on the cougar head and change it to an eagle or whatever you want. Like. There's a huge catalog of clip art. Even the text handling tools are so super powerful. You could change the, the spacing of the letters, or if you have two lines on top of each other, you could change the letting or uh, the line spacing between each line. There is a ton of powerful controls in there that you do not find in any other online designer. Right from that designer, you could also mock up your apparel for product images or proofs for your customer or you could even order transfers directly from EasyView as well. So it's all on transferexpress.com, absolutely free to use. You don't need to uh, have any subscriptions. You don't need to pay for anything like that. It's 100% free to use. Um, EasyView online designer at transferexpress.com. So if you go to transferexpress.com, all you have to do is sign up for a free account. We don't even ask you for your credit card number. You don't have to put any of that information in there. You don't need a business license or a tax ID. Transferexpress.com, click on order transfers right at the top. It'll put you in the designer. If you get stuck, uh, we have tons of YouTube videos on how to use EasyView Online Designer. We did a webinar, uh, maybe not even a year ago, uh, on walking through the full features of how you could design, how you can mock things up, uh, all from that simple tool. And if you have your own artwork too, or your customer sends you their logo and says, I want my logo, you could easily just upload the logo into that program as well. And it's free, it's browser-based. Uh, Adobe software, you need lots of RAM. You need an awesome computer uh, to be able to run those programs. EasyView is all browser-based, so it's available on uh, tablets or even your phone, on Chromebooks, those like super, super cheap laptops. It's all browser-based, and it's only dependent on your internet connection. So if you have an internet connection and you have any computing device, you're able to use EasyView Online Designer. So really, really cool. That's over at transferexpress.com. Uh, for our special kit, we always like to tack on some special offers. Uh, we have our application kit, which includes that t-shirt application ruler that we covered at the beginning of the webinar. That is just $35 uh, today for this uh, webinar. Actually, I think it's $35 all the time, but uh, we're going to get this shipping free for you today. Uh, so that is the special. Free shipping on this application kit. My boss is probably going to kill me, but I love you guys hanging out uh, and and hanging out with us. And so uh, for the rest of today, any application kit that you purchase, you'll see shipping when you check out, but we will, I'm going to go in there and absolutely clear the shipping charge because with anything with Transfer Express, you actually, your card isn't charged until the order ships. Uh, so when your application kit ships tomorrow, 
uh, I'm going to have already went in and, and eliminated the shipping fees on it. So you're only going to pay $35 for one of these kits. And shipping for these is 15 bucks because it's a lot loaded into a big box like you see right down there. Uh, in the bottom left. So if you click on over to offers uh, that are right here in the, the chat, I believe the offer in, and there's a link right there to the application kit. Um, and anybody who purchases that application kit today before midnight, uh, I will completely take the shipping fee off of you. So instead of being, uh, what is it, with 35, 50 bucks, uh, with $35 and a $15 shipping, it's just $35. So you could save 15 bucks on this application kit, you get a mouse pad, like I talked about, raising the print areas. You get those heat press test strips, uh, which are 20 bucks themselves. You get the application ruler, so you could get the, that awesome placement. A quick reference guide for applications on a poster. A $10 off coupon. So now we're making money at this point. If the test strips are 20 bucks, the coupon already is 10 bucks off. You're getting cover sheets and a mouse pad and a poster and a t-shirt and uh, a transfer and the application ruler all for five bucks. Like that's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty sweet deal. Um, uh, Mike put the link in there, uh, right there, that application kit. Uh, just a couple, uh, questions down there. But, uh, yeah, my boss is probably going to kill me for this one, but, I want to give you guys, uh, you know, the tools that we talked about here today, and and give you a give you a, a hookup that's not just the regular price for thirty five bucks, uh, but yeah, we'll get we'll get shipping off that. So it is a deal for you guys, fifteen bucks. You'll see shipping when you check out. But I promise you, I absolutely promise you, I will go in personally and remove the shipping fee from your order, so it's going to ship free. I'm gonna get in trouble, but I'm gonna do it for you guys. Okay, I'm doing it for you. This is this is uh this is if I get in trouble. You're the reason. <laughs> You're the reason why. I'm just kidding. Um, hopefully, I don't get in too much trouble. Uh, but you know, you guys, you guys hang out on Thursday afternoon, bettering yourself in your business. Um, and man, we're we're coming up on two hours. I'm gonna round this thing out. Uh, if you have more questions, I'm gonna be live on YouTube 2 p.m. tomorrow. That's me in that little picture wearing my my cool red shirt. But we call it the heat transfer answer. The last Friday of every month, 2 p.m. We wind down the week with a completely unscripted, unplanned YouTube live that is fueled by your questions. So uh, we've gotten some questions from the last one we didn't get to. So we have, I think, like two questions I'm gonna answer right away. I haven't even seen them yet. Mike's handling everything. Uh, but then when we get through, uh, we're going to uh, just pretty much, it's up, oh, we'll print shirts on it. Uh, we sit here uh, live uh, with just some cameras, me in the Transfer Express studio, similar to how I am right now. Uh, but we answer questions always going through uh, any challenges or if we see people share their success stories for the week. Like, man, I did my first 200 piece order today and it felt great. Like, it was awesome. These were the tips that I used. To, and it's it's just a sharing of ideas on a Friday. We get to wind down, have a good time. But we're always available via email, the info at transferexpress.com. We're always available between the hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Our, our great customer service team, 1-800-622-2280. You can read and subscribe to our blog, blog.transferexpress.com. I think Mike even put a few links down there to some blog posts. You can see all of our past and present uh, webinars uh, I guess not present because this is the present webinar, but it's going to go up on our transferexpress.webinars page. Uh, visit our website, of course, where the Easy View Online Designer is. Trade shows. We have all of them listed at our event schedule. Like I had mentioned, the Impressions Expo, that hands-on experience uh, with our products. You get to see the products. You get to take products home for yourself. Uh, we usually have specials on marketing kits or there's always a show special that we're running at a show. So, hey, if we could run show specials, I could run a, 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 a webinar special for you guys today. So I can't get in too too much uh, too much trouble. Uh, Kathy, the Q and A is on YouTube. Uh, we were we typically try to simulcast on TikTok too, uh, but we are getting some things changed around in our internet and the bandwidth required. We're just going to stay hardline to uh, to to live streaming on YouTube for this week. But we're going to try to bring back the TikTok uh, back in July. So the last Friday of July, we'll do another one as well. But we just get to hang out, super casual. Uh, connect with us on social media. Like I mentioned, we're on TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Google+. Plus. Is that even still a thing? I don't know. Uh, but anywhere that you guys are on social media, we're also on social media. Pinterest, if you consider Pinterest a social network, uh, we are on Pinterest as well. And of course, our YouTube, uh, where we'll be live streaming tomorrow at 2 p.m., and where we have tons of YouTube videos. It's where this webinar is going to end up probably sometime next week. Uh, and so that anybody could watch the replay or if you hung out with us here today. Um, Q&A, yes, Sherry, 2 p.m. Eastern time is when we'll be running that one uh, tomorrow. But yeah, completely unscripted. 
any question goes, uh, anything. Um, I've even asked, answered questions about like my favorite barbecue uh, joints. <laughs> so it doesn't even it doesn't even always stay limited to to heat pressing. I would say 99.9% .9 of it is about apparel decorating or heat printing in some way or another. But even we get sublimation questions and all these other questions. But um, I don't want to keep you guys here all day. If you want to talk more, come catch me tomorrow on YouTube. I'm more than happy to hang out. And then we'll spend another hour and a half or two hours <laughs> over there as well. But thank you guys for hanging out. I hope you learned something today. And I hope that you feel confident in that, that print placement or maybe picking up a, uh, a t-shirt alignment ruler that's going to help you, or maybe investigate that laser alignment system, anything that's going to help you and your t-shirt business save money, wow your customers, uh, and just make things easier for you guys. As always, I am floored by your dedication to bettering yourselves and your t-shirt business, and I wanna be a part of it to help you in absolutely any way I can. Uh, here at Transfer Express, we have uh, quite a bit of resources where we could play with different transfer types and experiment with different locations. And so if you guys have ideas that you want to try out, but maybe can't try it, let us know because we'll try it and then report back to you. We'll make a video on it on the whole entire process uh, and post it on YouTube so that you can learn from it and other people can learn from it too. It's what we're all about here at Transfer Express. Uh, we want to support you and make your business as successful as possible. But until next time, I'm Dave. Happy pressing, guys.